Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse, and I am your host. Let's get into it. Well, all right, everybody. Welcome back to another Thursday, fun day, Thursday, Thor's day here um, in Midgard and wherever else you might be catching this. I don't know if this reaches all the other or any of the other uh, nine realms. But uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in this week. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a part of this. Thanks for helping uh, this platform grow to the size that it has become. We've really reached some new heights here collectively on all of the different, you know, platforms. But I mean, over a thousand followers on Spotify, um, over 15,000, I think 15 or 16,000 on Facebook, uh, five and a half thousand on, on YouTube. And, um, what was that? I think like 770 something on Instagram, but yeah, we are, uh, doing pretty good thing. Dang, 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 nab it out, Jay. Um, but <laughs> thank you guys for for being here and uh, you know supporting this podcast in the ways that you do. Uh, if you're new here, thank you for for tuning in and checking out this podcast. Um, and if you're a Facebook subscriber specifically, um, I said you know Thursday, um, and, and then thinking of everybody else that's catching this. But if you are a Facebook subscriber, then you have already caught this episode. You guys, want to know more about that? Um, then please head over to the Midgard Musings Facebook page and you will be given the option to subscribe to my page. You can get some benefits and perks uh, for a very, very low uh, monthly fee. It's like uh, $2.50. Um, you don't even have to subscribe, you know, uh, re recurrently. You can do it month to month. You can stop whenever you feel like it. You're under no obligation, of course, to do that. Um, but it does give you early access to the podcast. Um, so if you're just like itching to see or hear what I'm talking about each week before Thursdays, um, there's your opportunity. Um, what else we got going on? Oh, um, so I've been talking now for a little while about the Shadow Moot event um, that uh, Raven Moonhearth hosts up in Springfield, Tennessee. And um, I mentioned... Uh, you know, I have been mentioning that I will be there, my wife and I will be there, um, and, and, and stuff. And then, uh, as it turns out, uh, we'll be there vending this year. So, um, I know my wife's got some wood burning items that she likes to, to sell, um, some things that she's, that she's handmade, um, various, you know, like pagan themed, um, wood burned items. I think she's got some bowls and some coasters, maybe some other, um, random items and stuff that she's made. Um, and then I usually am there to do rune readings. Um, but regardless of whether I'm there or not, um, if you're in the area and you haven't yet heard of Shadow Moot, um, here's the information about it. There'll be a, a Facebook event uh, for you to find and, uh, you know, gives you like location. Of course, it's in Springfield, Tennessee, it tells you uh, kind of what to expect um, and also what's to be expected of us as as uh, guests and attendees of the event but it is a wonderful annual uh autumn event it's it's literally just right around the time of that uh you know autumnal equinox and then also the germanic uh observances of winter nights i believe this year um on saturday friday or saturday the uh there, there's going to be a like a um, a partial lunar no sorry partial solar eclipse um i know totality and all that's going to be visible in other parts of the of the world but um we're going to see barring it's not you know overcast or rainy um but it's still going to be happening so we'll see part of it um so it's pretty pretty cool if you think about it that you know they're having this big get together and then there's that amazing celestial event that takes place so definitely uh, consider coming out to uh shadow moot this year and experience what Raven Moon Hearth and everybody that comes has to offer for that. So, um, 
that is next month. So what do we got going on here today uh, on the podcast is a topic that um, uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of content around. Um, so and, and why do I want to talk about something like this? Right. So what we're talking about this week is uh, the, 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 the Germanic heathen curse or cursing pole or scorn pole called the Neath Stung or Neathing Pole in English, right? Um, and why do I want to talk about something like that? Um, well, I figure, you know, it's 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 an important topic to cover because I think some people will come into uh, alternative religious paths like paganism especially and and think that there's, you know, um, you know, it's always not always... So that's my favorite. It's not always love and light, right? <laughs> um, then there's darkness and there's, uh, you know, evil, if you want to call it that, right? There's this uh, malevolent side of, of things about any belief system, I think, really. You know, the way the Christians say, hey, you can't have God without Satan, right? You can't have God without the devil. Um, so there's this, like, balance that that's always being sought, right, between order and chaos and when we when we as germanic heathens view the world many of us see that as this constant cycle right where um the forces of order um looking to keep and maintain that order and then those forces of chaos and entropy and all of those things in nature that are constantly wearing away at that and but it's necessary right there has to be this ebb and flow and there has to be this give and take and um, I also think that uh, people who um, may not know or, 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 or realize what a kneading pole is and what purpose it serves may go online and may start looking at, um, you know, ways to curse people, ways to bring ill luck um, or, or attempt to uh, again, kind of mark certain people in a way, uh, and in a negative way, for maybe a variety of reasons. And I wanted to talk about this particular topic today, because I think, you know, especially now in today's world, um, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of sensitive people out here, right? Um, and I think that when, if you're not careful, I think that uh, when, when offenses come to people and and when people feel like they've been disrespected or, or 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 done ill against that they are going to try and find ways to uh retaliate and um there's danger in that you know what i mean like there's always be careful when it comes to retaliation um of any sort but especially when it comes to like this type of thing right spiritual um metaphysical uh, to, uh, areas where you want to try to put like a curse on somebody uh, or whatever. It's it's heavy duty stuff. Um, I I don't recommend going about it lightly and and um, you know realize that just because you've been inconvenienced or or, or wronged or slighted or maybe just downright disrespected um, doesn't always require that you actively go out and seek retaliation you know or a recompense kind of one of those things for me at least that i look at in a way as you know picking our battles you know and if there's a reason or purpose behind seeking such a thing seeking to do such a thing you know what is that purpose is it just to try to get even you know is it just to settle the score really as it were and look, I get it, um, especially heathens, right? We, we, we look at the existence between people in the world as, as reciprocal, you know, like quite often we'll see. And, and then maybe some heathens will uh, maybe give a nod into the, you know, towards the Havamal stanza that, that talks about, you know, repay your, you know, enemy um, lie for lie, leasing for leasing, right? Like that sort of thing. And uh, I don't know, it's... When it, when it comes to stuff like that, again, I, I, I've, I've mentioned before on this podcast and in person too to other people that I don't see 
these poems, the, the like the Havamal or any of the other Edic poems or, or sources from the sagas or anything as a book of commandments or a Bible or anything to go by. I see the Havamal as, as, as this, you know, again, sayings um, of, of ways to be and, and, and recommended behavior that fit the society and, and, and the people at the time, you know? Hospitality being a big thing, reciprocity being a big thing, um, you know, all of that is it was it was very important to the people at the time, and so it makes sense that something that would be written down is like, hey, these are you know some good ways to be. These are sayings of Odin and all this, right? I feel like that's to be considered when tossing around quotes from and, and stuff from from like something like the Hall of them all. Um, so again, going back to like the curse thing, right? Why we would do something like that, why any heathen would do something like that. And what is even this kneading pole, right? What are we talking about? What is the need stung, um, as it were? And I'm going to cite a couple of things that are going to be annotated as always, as, as, as best I always can, at least uh, in the show notes and in the description, um, just the way you guys have some written information to go back and, and, and look to. Um, but the kneading pole or the scorn pole, the need stung has very limited, uh, attestations in, in any sort of what we might consider historical source material. Um, and it's a very specific thing and it's a very specific, uh, it has, it serves a very specific purpose. Okay. So um the the the, the most vibrant ex, uh, example of the knee song being used is in the saga of Egil Skallagrimsson and in that saga there's a line that um, talks about this knee song or this curse pole and I'm going to read um a line or I'm going to read that line uh for you I'm also going to have it um written up here on screen so that for those of you that are um, watching and, and, and want to you know read along you can but um again it's from Egil's saga or you know the saga of Egil Scala Grimson um but it says and when all was ready for sailing Egil went up into the island he took in his hand a hazel pole and went to a rocky eminence that looked inward to the mainland then he took a horse's head and fixed it on the pole. After that, in solemn form of curse, he thus spake. Here set I up a curse pole, and this curse I turn on King Eric and Queen Gunhilda. Here he turned the horse's head landwards. This curse I also turn I turn also on the guardian spirits who dwell in this land that they may all wander astray, nor reach or find their home, for they have driven out of the land King Eric and Gunhilda. This spoken, he planted the pole down in a rift of the rock and let it stand there. The horse's head he turned inwards to the mainland, but on the pole he cut runes, expressing the whole form of curse. So this is the so this is the result of when King Eric and Queen Gunhilda outlaws uh Egil, Skull of Grimson, right? He is a scald, he's he's an important person at the time, but he, he, he does things that get him outlawed. Um and again the name of the saga is the saga of Egil Skull of Grimson. So you can read the saga if you want to know more of the specifics. But he is um he, you know, he's he's none too happy about the idea of it being of him being outlawed and, and now being cast out of society. Um, and what's interesting to note is that that term neath, right, to, to be neething, um, or to be neath, really meant at the time that you were a villain and you were an outlaw, you were you were uh cast out of that society, and it was um not uncommon to uh be literally at the mercy of anyone or anything that that 
came upon you if you were declared needing if you were a needs person if you were a needs mon or needs needs clone or whatever you had no protection from the structured order of society you were outlawed and so you were more susceptible to um robberies and, and and bandits and vandals and stuff like that along the way because you didn't have the protection of that inner that inner group that inner society anymore you know so it's interesting to think about the fact that the the need stung <laughs> the needing pole is in this particular attestation being erected by someone who was outlawed right I'm not going to go into the specifics as to why and, and 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 stuff again read the story for yourself to your own research to your own homework i gave you the clue the little breadcrumb trail go out and read it find about it uh, uh, uh find out about it yourself um but here we see again in this specific example that agio uh first of all he gets a hazel pole um and, and he puts a horse's head on it and he says the curse to in the direction that the horse's head is facing it says it was facing uh in inward uh towards the mainland kind of facing the kingdom facing where king eric and queen gunhilda were were ruling over um but then he turns it outward to face the outer perimeters right so he's 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 cursing them within and he's also cursing the land vatir the the guardian spirits as it mentions or the whites of the land right he's cursing them so that way they are scared they are never they are never settled they are never they're constantly wandering astray and stuff trying to find their home they're disturbed this is a big this was a very big bold move to do to these people at the time because again we we, we see that this concept of regional local uh spirits that people coexist around uh especially in the folklore right we we, we see that this is an of high importance and that they wanted to keep the spirits of the land peaceful and at peace and they didn't want to disturb them they didn't want to upset them um and here we have agio doing a very specific thing to to do the opposite of that right to, to piss them off to, to scare them to make them unsettled um and then he speaks the curse, right? He speaks the curse saying that he uh, doesn't want the land Vitir, doesn't want the, 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 the spirits of the land to find rest. Um, and then on top of all of that, when he says it, he turns it back inwards towards the, 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 the mainland and carves runes or cuts runes expressing the whole form of the curse so it's it's spoken into existence and then it's carved onto the needing pole um to 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 spell it out right so it's it's carved in let's say carved in stone but it's it's literally cut into the to the curse pole what he just said um so there's a very specific example of what an needing pole was it's described as 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 a pole with a horse head on it a lot of uh artistic representations of this show it kind of set up where you know they've got these cross beams um kind of set up in like an x form and then the pole is leaning towards you know so that way it's like laying or or, or positioned at an angle upward towards the sky um in a way it almost looks like this uh like a stick figure you know very ominous looking if you think about this this something is big enough to hold this, the size of a, of a horse's head um so there's there's your historical you say uh you know attestation of a kneading pole being uh used and erected and then there are some examples of of, of variants of of kneading poles being used in contemporary usages a modern example that is seen sometimes or has been seen um, in Iceland uh, was seen in back in 2006. So there were um, there was a case where this farmer uh, is somewhere in Iceland. He was claiming to be um, well, this, this 
kind of is an important part. He was claiming descendants from Agil, Scala Grimson. He was he was claiming to be one of Agil's descendants. And he raised an eating pole using the half the, the head of a calf instead of the head of a horse. Um and the reason why he raised this this uh this kneading pole right was it was something to do with um you know something that the man did this other man right so this farmer he he had he had a beef he had a he had a gripe he had something against this man and on that kneading pole was a note written something along the lines of that he the the that man that farmer would not rest you know until this other person was either outlawed himself or dead um and uh so what's what's really interesting is that the the the, the case around this the reason why this uh <laughs> why this kneading pole was written i said the guy the guy had beef uh this is very reminiscent of um the john wick story right the the guy ran over the farmer's puppy or dog killed his dog whether by accident or intentionally um his dog died and uh that farmer was like screw you buddy put the calf head on that pole put it on there that i am not gonna rest until you're either dead or or a criminal or outlawed yourself and this was in 2006 so this is again this is very modern this is very new um i believe that uh that case was considered as as a, as a crime in and of itself, right? Because here we got someone um, basically say, saying, I'm not going to rest until you're dead or, or whatever. And that could be considered a threat. So that happened all over someone's dog being run over. Um, that was in Iceland. Also uh, in 2006, um, there was a local politician in Norway who used sheep heads and raised several kneading poles. Um, and, and this was in protest to, I guess, some sort of an election, um, an, a, a local election. Um, there have also been cases um, as, as back in 2016 where kneading poles used um, dried fish heads Right, so they were kind of a, an, an improvised version of a kneading pole. It could have been, you know, we didn't have horse heads or or, or large cattle or anything of, of livestock available to us. So we're just gonna, you know, I don't know. I'm just thinking like you know chopsticks with fish heads on them. Who knows what it was? But they were cod fish heads, you know, so dried cod. Um, and this was done in 2016 as a local, uh, what do you call it, demonstration or, or protest against the Icelandic uh, prime minister at the time. Um, and then lastly, the last one that we know the, of, an, of an example just happened a few years ago, and this was in 2020 during or at the um, All Thing. So the, the current Icelandic parliament is, you know, is it, they are called uh, the All Thing, you know. Um, and there was a kneading pole uh, erected there at like in front of that parliament building using two um i believe they were sheep heads they're called sveed so i think they're like prepared or, or fermented or some sort of prepared uh sheep heads um but that was done in front of the again the the, the icelandic parliament building and then there was a sign on the pole saying that the government was um allegedly treating like working classes um poorly so predominantly female well, the working class of, of, of female workers um saying that they weren't they you know they weren't being paid fairly they were being mistreated um this was all this, this is all right at the time of the pandemic uh the COVID 19 pandemic you know and in in protest of, of of how their workers are being treated you know there were kneading poles put up in front of their government's uh head of office you know so um the poll at that time claimed to turn that around on the all thing with a curse in the sense that they wanted the 
the plights and the things that the working people were experiencing to be reversed and put back onto the people that were in their political power. So you'll note, I, I kind of like noticed a theme in some of these, right? Here we had, you know, Egil um, erected his, his kneading pole against the king and queen, right? Which, by the way, um, from the story, from the, from the saga, um, the curse worked. Um, they ended up fleeing or, or leaving the land. Uh, the kings and the king and queen did, you know. So the intent or the purpose behind the curse uh, did, definitely was fulfilled. Um, and then we see other examples throughout history, in relatively recent times, that were documented at least about you know people doing things towards the established rulers or leaders, you know, governmental leaders, um, things like that. And then you got this own guy who was just like, you ran over my dog, dude, and I hope you die. <laughs> um, but, you know, I guess uh, my whole thing is, you know, when, when, when it comes to curses, right, when it comes to this uh, this idea of, of wanting to wish harm or, or uh, you know, put into existence, speak into existence, intent behind bringing harm upon somebody, there's got to be some really, really good uh reasoning behind it i think um and i've come close a couple of times in recent times um where i was like find me a horse head or a horse skull you know i was i was fully ready and prepared to get the pole get the horse head get to get to uh writing up the curse and then painting putting the runes on the pole uh for that and and setting one i i was i was ready fully intended all i was like if i had the materials in front of me if i had the everything at the time i, I probably would have gone ahead and done it um could i have done something a little bit differently yeah i could have i mean i'm sure uh again with with the improvised methods that we've heard here today there's, you know, it's not like locked in stone that it's got to be a horse head or it has to be, you know, so many feet tall or so many feet wide or anything like that. You can improvise and you can kind of follow the methodology. But uh, the, the, the point of it all is that I didn't, and I'm glad that I didn't, um, because those things are, are that's serious business. Um, I don't, I don't particularly see the, uh, the comparison between like a Germanic kneading pole being compared to like a, a hex or, or any other sort of like name for a curse that you might, uh, hear about or, I you know they're, they're really, uh, they're, they're more popular, I think in like Wiccan neo-pagan wiccan uh circles or, or or communities where people are asking like hey i want to do this on this on someone or they did this to me i need to you know release them from me or something like you know i don't i don't necessarily see the similarities between the two i think that when the kneading pole is erected it's like that's it it's 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 done there is no receiving it back to you you know if, if you've done it right and if you've done it the right way then it's gonna it's gonna do what it's intended to do um that's just my opinion okay and, and again i'm not gonna go into like telling you you're right or wrong if you if you believe me or, or don't believe me or agree with me or don't agree with me this is, this is my personal opinion i think once the kneading pole is set and done i've done a variant of a kneading Right. I've, I, I've, I have, like I said, I mentioned before that I, there have been a couple of times where I was this close to doing it. Well, there was one time that I've done a, a, I had good reason to, um, declare someone needing and, and make them outlaw and, and put them at such a, at such a distance that they couldn't come back, you know, or that they, they were, they were forever banished. And, and, and so that was, 
that was done that was done years ago and and it hasn't returned you know like it's it's out there it's it's that 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 person that thing is is forever needing and uh you know it was it was important and it was serious and that's why it was done um but but the the other times that i've thought of doing it were driven almost entirely by emotion by my feelings being hurt you know and uh i was like man what am you know looking back on it and thinking you know had i followed through you know um what what kind of consequences could have been could have been had from it you know maybe not necessarily consequences that i would have um felt right away or or or, or even felt at all but just it's serious stuff you know you talk about putting a, a hex or putting a curse you know raising a kneading pole against someone i mean it's it's clearly powerful um and 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 if you want to be a, of the type to believe the 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 story the lore the myths um the sagas in this case right this isn't mythology this is this is other stuff but the you know information from the sources um says that it was effective and it did what it was supposed to do in a very effective way and to take responsibility for that you know what i mean like the again where i'm coming from was like even though i don't feel like if i do this i'm gonna you know receive it back if if something um you know there that because of that balance that needs to be so I, again i'm not a big into like that side of things of the, like the curses that well if you're gonna do it then um you're gonna you know you, what you put out you're gonna get back that sort of thing i just i know that the the the, the universe the world like the everything has a really interesting way of, of balancing itself out um and a lot of times we don't even have to do anything for it to to happen right i know a lot of folks that um over the years I've, I've known a lot of folks i should say that that have taken this uh this this side of of their spirituality um and really embrace that darkness and, and embrace that uh, malevolent sort of thing and i didn't i don't like seeing where it put them you know what i mean like i don't like seeing what it did to them i think there's a place for it and i think there's a purpose for things like this and i i don't think that it needs to happen at every whim or or for just every time that you feel that you've been inconvenienced or or mad or upset or disrespected or anything like that i mean you start going down that road and you just become this spiteful you know hate driven troll uh you, you you become transformed into this this diabolical creature um and because of that because of how it eats away at you that it, you, it become you, it consumes you and you become that thing that is so diabolical that you want to put against someone that that it you you become without now yourself you know and i'd say it's easy probably for 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 some people to to you know some people are more um easily triggered than others you know some people would be like man he disrespected me i'm about to go knock his ass out you know or how dare you um how dare you you know position my family against me you know i'm gonna curse you now because of it and you know if it's pick your battles um i i will say that just this year 
you know, I lost my father. Um, he passed away in April. I essentially lost every other living relative that I have. Um, except for just a few, because the living relatives that I have that, uh, you know, believe what they believe want nothing to do with me because of that, you know? So essentially this year was like that. It was like the nail in the proverbial coffin, you know? And there was a lot of things for me to learn this year after my dad passed away. You know, that was my, that was the first parent that I've lost. You know, my mother is still physically alive. Um, but nothing, having nothing to do with me, you know, and that hurts. Uh, I would be lying if I said that it never stung and it doesn't, you know, from time to time that it that still doesn't hurt. Um, but at the time when I lost my father, you know, when I felt that pain of that type of loss and was faced with it and going through the various stages of grief, you know, learning, knowing what some of the things that transpired during his physical life that led up to him passing away. And then the things that happened within the week or two after him dying while I was, while I was, you know, up in New York and doing all that. It was, I was so mad, you know, I was so angry with certain people because I blamed them not for my, not for him, my dad dying, right? Not for him, but I, I blamed them for me not having that close family, you know, feeling of, of my blood kin, you know, and it, it almost, it, uh, it almost caused me to forget the family that I do have my, my tribe, my wife, you know, her family, um, her mother and father who have 100 and 100,000% adopted me as, as, as their own, you know, I, you know, you ask them, what I am to them, and it's, you know, that's Jesse, he's our son, you know, it's not son-in-law, it's, they are just as, as loving and welcoming to me as if they were my own flesh and blood, and I've also got my tribe, the extension of my immediate family, that have become closer to me as, as brethren, as kin, than my own flesh and blood, and uh, it, it was, it's, it's wild, you know, just like reflecting on this sort of thing and, and realizing, man, I was this close. I was this close to putting a curse, a kneading on, on some people, you know, were they deserving of it? I mean, again, who was, who am I to, who am I to say that? I think, you know, when you start going down that path, when you start thinking, you know, they deserve this. I don't know. Um, I guess you kind of have to look at it that way in, in, in some aspects. Like, you know, you, you got to measure up their deeds against what is morally and ethically right to you. But who's to say that what they did wasn't morally and ethically right to them? You know, why they do the things that they do? Well, if it opposes your beliefs or if it opposes the way you do things, is it just a difference of opinion at that point? And shouldn't you just agree to disagree, respect their boundaries and move on? You know, or was there actually physical or psychological? I mean, was there actual harm done that is warranting you know a, a curse is warranted something something of that severity is warranted right some people are just so vengeful and and, and so quick to seek revenge right they don't think about the, the consequences and the outcome of it 
I don't think that kneading poles or that kneed stungs should be omitted from modern Germanic heathen practices. I don't. I think they have a place. I think with the right purpose, right? Um, and actually having someone who is, uh, I would say, magically uh, capable enough, because <laughs> I think there is some, I think this does, you know, fall under the category of uh, magic, right? The woo-woo type stuff. This is mysticism. These are, these are things that, you know, you can't scientifically or, you know, for some people rationally explain how the kneading pole works, why it works. It, that, that's not, there's, there's nothing scientifically proven <laughs> that you can go back on. Like, yeah, well, it's because of this sex thing and that and the other. But it's documented and, and uh, you know, been put into the, st the sagas that it does work. And I've seen what I've done be effective in work as well. I guess all I'm saying is I think it has its place. I think it does belong in modern heathen practices. Um, I just think it needs to be done, again, with the right purpose in mind and not done with hasteful, bitter retaliation. Um and I'm no, I, you know, there, there's probably going to be some people that are that are watching this and going, but well, that's exactly what it's for, right? Like that, that's exactly what it did. Look at Agil, who gets outlawed right by the king, and he goes, "Oh yeah, well, I'll, I'll show you guys." Sticks a pole in the ground with a horse's head and curses everything in there and that and behind it. He says, "Until you walk away, till you get out of here, until you're gone, this land will not be restful." You know. And so, that seems a bit retaliatory. Retaliatory, yeah. The man whose dog was run over, that's absolutely an act of retaliation. But again, those are modern those are modern um, examples of it. So I don't know. I guess all I'm saying is be careful with it. You know, whatever the purpose is behind what you're doing, just know that it's powerful stuff. It does work. If you're gonna read any of this stuff and and, and hold any of this any sort of you know, belief to it, know that it works, know that it's effective, and know that when done correctly, it will bring about the results that, that you want. And you know, guys, I'm going to tell you right now, like, I, I went so far as to write out the curse that I was going to, you know, I was asking you, where can I get a horse's head? Like, I was going to go and do the whole, there wasn't going to be this, like, small little thing, like, I was going to make a thing of it. Um, I had the curse written out and, uh, like I was ready and raring to go, but I'm glad that I had more on my head at the time than just my emotions to fuel me, you know, I had people I could talk to. I could have other, there were other resources to me that I could process that grief that I was feeling. Cause that's really what it was, you know? I was I was going through that stage of grief where I was angry. Um and I don't I feel better now knowing that I didn't do it for that reason. Um So That's the thing. You know, when you when you think about how many times we behave in in ways and 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 carry out things just because of how we were feeling at the time, you know? A lot of us could do better. A lot of us could learn a thing or two from ourselves. And I hope that the idea of this, uh, this need stand, you know, the need stand, the needing pole, the curse pole, the scorn pole, that if you're scornful, if you're mad, if you're looking to curse someone or somebody or somebody's, that you're considering the why and the purpose. Are you consumed by hate and malice and you want to get even? 
or is it something that a legitimate wrong was done and of course you're not going to feel good about it but um you know so i'll tell you when i when i when i talked earlier about the the knee thing that i did um that 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 one time um it was done against someone who caused physical and um i don't say like psychological but was physical harm against my against my inner yard right they brought physical damage physical harm to my inner yard and their 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 demeanor their way who they were was a threat um and i knew that if given the chance you know out in the heathen community out there where i'm at right that this person could show up and be there and maybe even attend some of the same events that you know i would be attending my wife and i would be attending and i didn't want that i wanted them to be so lost and so and to wander and to be so astray that they could never find a home you know oh you damaged my home you you brought ill against my home how about you never have a home how about you never find a physical home how about you never find a spiritual home how about you just wander astray forever and it was serious like i said you know um haven't heard from that person to this day don't know don't care but i wasn't i wasn't like you know i can't believe you you know you've ruined my carpet and you know or <laughs> you you know you 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 you, you we're, we're behaving in a way that was just traumatizing to to me and my wife like oh i can't believe you here's a curse like no not again it was it was a it was a thought out thing i i wasn't mad I, I was upset yeah for sure but it wasn't like i was doing it because uh i had any, any other courses of action it was this is it now you're you're done done for good so think about what i'm saying today right it, it, this is just one pagan one heathen's perspective on the topic um i'd love to hear your thoughts about it i do i want to know um first of all what is your take on this you want to call it dark magic i don't know um working in the dark right shadow work and eh, that doesn't really this doesn't really fall under the category of shadow work i would say but um yeah, the opposite side of the coin, right? When it's not all uh, when it's not all sunshines and rainbows. Where do you sit on it? Do you think that there's a place for it um, in in your in your practices? And what are your what's your take on the application of the kneading pole here in modern times? Do you think that it has a place? Do you think that it should have only specific applications for its use? What's your thoughts on it? Be anxious to hear what you think about it so down in the comments or right into the podcast or just share your thoughts that's right go down there in the comment section let us know what you think if you want to write into the podcast you can do that it's midgard musings tn at gmail.com or you can call the hotline that number is 615-671-9832 and it is 24 hours a day seven days a week just call leave a voicemail you got three minutes per voicemail that you want to leave. So if you're a long talker, you got a lot to say, might want to shorthand it or just call back a few times and leave a couple of voicemails. And we'll feature you right here on this podcast when you do that. Um, so, yeah, definitely let us know what you think. And uh, if you're watching this or, or listening to this on the Spotify platform, there is going to be a Q&A, maybe even a poll for you to engage in. So if you want to share your feedback and your thoughts that way, it's a great way to engage uh, on the Spotify platform and get your voice out there heard and seen and, and all that fun stuff. So definitely be sure to do all that. And as always, check the link tree link that's in the show notes and description area 
of this podcast for all the ways that you can support the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast and Midgard Musings as a whole. All the content that I upload, all of the stuff that I share, um, everything doesn't come for free. Everything has a price, and you can help support me in that way. Simply liking, following, sharing, subscribing um, is, is a great way for doing that. Um, but there's also other monetary ways of support as well. So check the link tree link down there. See if anything fits you. Thank you, as always, for your ongoing and constant support. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Until we talk again, may the gods continue to notice you, and may your ancestors smile upon you. See you in the next one.